The mother saw the positive influence I had on her son and she started singing my praises, ululating on some ha ukarabo, umakotiwam, ukarabo, umakotiwam, umakarabo, uma, to a point where even after we broke up, she was still like, ukarabo, umakotiwam, u. You know when an ex girlfriend is the bane of a new woman's existence? Because the mother still has the photo frame of the ex. That was me in my ex's mom's life's life. She loved me because I transformed her son. She was one of those horrible, annoying moms that ended up loving me. A very difficult feat to achieve as a woman. To find favor in the eyes of a mom that's basically too clingy to her son. And I got there. I, I got this woman to imagine me as a gem in the life of the son. So when you were that kind of mama to give every girl that comes into your son's life that stank your luck, stank your luck. And then there's one that your mom is like, Unga moshi no karab. Unga moshi no karab. Don't destroy it. Don't mess this up. Every time my ex and I would fight, my mom, her, his mom would be like, do you want me to talk to her? Do you like, and my ex would be like, hey, she's my woman. I know how to talk to my own woman. Ma, come on, no, give me a break. When your mom that generally does not like your girlfriends, all of a sudden is like, dude, you gotta investigate that. You gotta look into it. Especially if your mom is one of those clingy ones that annoys every one of your girlfriends. And not only did my ex's mom make like that gong in his head, ka, 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 karabo. So too did his sister. The women in his family were like, karabs, karabs, karabs. Cause I got that man on the street that narrow so much that ain't no woman, no matter how much competition and feistiness might dwell in them, was prepared if at all they loved him as a brother, a cousin, a, a daughter, a son. Ain't no woman would be prepared to let go of a girl like that. So I became the most important thing that happened to this man, according to his family. Most, all the women and most of the men. There were, however, a couple of misogynistic cousins here and there that spoke nasty, but you're not gonna please everyone. In, a, in any family you marry into or date into, you're gonna have that one like cousin that always gives you the stank ass. I, but most of but for the better part of the time I was very well received by his family aunts and everything like across the board dude I was basically married la paya and from what the Lord showed me when this new woman came into the picture she wasn't new she was old they knew her from long ago plus they knew her stats her reputation goodness gracious guy they, they were like hello when she came into the life they were panicking everybody was like no 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 this is my our son cannot marry this woman but he married her anyway on some mom i'm gonna do it deal dude when you've got that kind of ride or die and every one of your family members is like not this one anyone else and on top of that the very friends who broke us up got guilty they got guilty from what the Lord showed me they got guilty they were like so we break jom joms whatever his name was up with ukarabu and then he ends up with the worst woman ever like what this chick did to my ex his friends frowned upon it so much because that's the thing about these hypocrite men they will go and team up against the girl that breaks their boy and you will be the you know harlot for life when you walk in the street they'll spit before you walk they'll literally tell you stop Okay, keep walking. Men can be mean to a woman that cheats on their boy or that hurts them in some way. And this chick broke my ex in that way. On top of that, she was a baby mama of another ex. And on top of that, she had a reputation. Uh, another friend. And on top of that, she had, but it was late, a, a reputation for kind of being with a, uh, one too many men that knew each other. And so they did not approve of her, even in the slightest. But they couldn't say anything because they broke us up. Like, you know when you're jealous of a relationship, but you hope that this guy's going to move on with a woman that does not intimidate you or that you don't have a crush on. And he doesn't get with just some random Jane, but gets with the one Jane that all the boys can't stand. That's what my ex did. His friends don't like her. So basically, you know the saying, better the devil you know than the one that you don't know? I was a better devil in my ex's life. Don't know what you got till it's gone than the one that they didn't know. I was the lesser evil because they were competing with my, bo with my, ex, with my ex. They were happy that he should lose me. And some of them crushed on me enough to not want to see me with any other men in front of them. They broke us up and the woman, because they cared for their boy, they didn't hate him. You know, hypocrites. When he ended up with this other woman, they were like, dog, out of everyone this one they couldn't even advise him against her they all just had to shut up because they cost him me his dad regretted it his friends some of his cousins that were mean regretted it and now the guy is a mess a royal mess that can't deal he went and married a woman and nobody warned him against it i had a dream where one of his friends that had a crush on me that put witchcraft on our relationship that also badly advised was begging me to get back together with him before they got married he was begging me in the dream he was on his knees on some karabo please call him and get back together with him he can't marry this woman and i was looking at him on some i'm in christ in my dream i was like i'm in christ i was washing dishes cleaning the house i was like i'm in christ i can't be with an unbeliever that was my only reason and he was like Ish, uh, maybe he will love the lord too hey uh, like he was basically begging me and this is one of the guys that broke us up my ex never caught um understanding until he impregnated this girl so she became the second best friend to become baby daddy to this woman and um at when she was 
because when she had just given birth after for after after she had given birth just like with Anna Hoam in being Mary Jane holding his precious daughter in his hands he wished he could bring himself back to me with this child and make out of me a stepmama because he did not want this woman anymore it's like it dawned on him after she had made a baby with him they'd made a baby together by the time my ex um, married this woman by the time he made out of her an honest woman he didn't love her he didn't want her he just married because he had a baby now with her and he realized that even the feelings he thought he had he didn't actually have them like you know when because a woman rejects you you think that you're losing something in her out of the hunting instinct in men when you can't catch your prey you feel as if though that prey has something up on all the other prey that you prosper to catch so my ex-boyfriend thought that he had up on me that that girl had something up on me because i accepted him while she rejected him so that reverse psychology dwelling inside his body made him believe that there was more value in a gold digger than in the rattle die until he found himself finally catching the, the gold digger because he was finally in the hunting playing field where such a gold digger can be caught he had money and once he had her in his house no virtue the same things he enjoyed with me weren't in her the same conversations we had he couldn't have with her the same closeness the same intimacy that we shared all that stuff was empty umfazi a woman that is cold and does not love a man for the right reasons cannot be truly intimate she cannot be truly loving all she brings to the table is a whole bunch of sex um sensuality basically but not real intimacy and this girl was like a sex machine that was not love and my ex had comfort with me remember i was a hammock and he was swinging in me he was relaxed now he couldn't be relaxed with this woman because he never knew whether or not she would leave him from the next guy and the next guy now that he had her he realized she was not worth the pursuit you know when you don't understand what you need to look at yeah that was my ex he found this out even before he married her he could have just repented given his life to the lord loved the daughter taking care of the daughter and asked the lord to give him a wife now that he sees the mistake he's made with me instead he married her it's like the devil he fell straight into the devil's trap and after getting married he became even more bitter but because he was busy competing with me he had lost me instead of being sorry for what he did to me apologizing literally coming to me on some kind of a look i heard you i'm sorry just for closure since we were not horrible in our relationship let's be cordial if anything that's what i did i tried to be cordial with him and he went and hurt me the way that he did also with sorcery and spread lies about me him and um my family members turned against me i've been really hurt very badly in this season of persecution and among the people that have severely broken me as this ex of mine right uh he could have done that and the lord might have because of his repentance blessed him with a loving woman and this time he would have known how to treat her well i, I mean there was no way that him and i could get back together that was a chapter that had to be closed i was moved on but he could have taken those lessons and gotten a great wife anyway and that would have been content to take his uh son not son but daughter and be stepmom etc etc he still had a chance even after he impregnated her but he finished it all the devil threw him into that because all along he was not sorry so now that he was trapped in this marriage uh and i was still single i was unmarried i was basically waiting on the lord for a husband he got obsessed with the prospect of me marrying another man and it ate away at him so badly because when you have had such a wonderful experience with a woman the fact the thought of another man touching her loving her kissing her in the way that you used to however loving her better than you you like it's the kind of thing that causes murder in a man that hasn't moved on like a bit of an obsessive creep because my ex did not want to repent he rather chose the devil and so he invested in a lifetime worth of sorcery against me and i have been getting lambasted every so often by witchcraft that comes from him anew because he is addicted to a point where even when he doesn't see me he's still busy going to reinvest in his sorcery because he thinks it's keeping me buried and in a bunch recently because i went back to facebook i found out that he even went and took out a death curse because now he thinks he can kill me now he thinks he can live with like he's this is the first time he's done that gone that extreme so it just got worse and worse over the years i am not only afflicted by a death curse from him but from two other guys that came and messed up with me but i never dated them i just rejected them because they were not godly and another guy that recently was in my life i have had so many men try to kill me using spirits because of the fact that they woke up after it was clear we could never be together and realized that i was the one who got away they messed up so badly during the time when we were together or talking that upon waking up to see that they hurt the wrong woman she was not the typical they never found healing in christ and in uh, they never sought the lord's face to help them not take out their past pain on a new woman so they just painted me like men that get turned into misogynists because of the pain they endure at the hands of jezebelic women come up with like a protocol for dealing with these kinds of women they literally have a 10-step process on how to deal with women period so they tell themselves we're going to slap them with reverse psychology a whole bunch of gaslighting don't tell her that you love her too much it might get to her head whatever you want to do for her do 10 percent of that don't ever give your full and on top of that faithful for what they literally tell themselves that if a woman is going to hurt me i might as well hurt her from the beginning first except they then meet women 
that are ride or die, ride or die. I'm your ride or die. And this woman is happy to like make out of herself a doormat that this man can walk on it. Lay herself prostrate on the floor that this man can find ipampara on which to step that he can get uh, above. You know when you are happy to bend over backwards. There was this woman that got interviewed in the US, I forgot what her name is, and they were talking about it's like she basically went viral and she was busy talking about how she packs her man's bags, she is submissive, where before she was not that girl. And the world of um worldly women are looking at that on some goodness, she's weak. Well, she's not in Christ, that lady, but her principle of submission is absolutely spot on. When men walk into the life of a woman that is happy to get over her feministic flair, to bend over backwards and lay herself prostrate on the floor, that's when a man needs to be like, okay, I need to get over myself. I need to seek the Lord's face to help me heal so I don't hurt the kind of woman that's going to make out of me a very happy grandfather, like a, an old man, like a guy that's getting older and healthy in my cheeks, plump, getting fatter. The kind of woman that my mom would be relieved I met because my mom was worried that I'm going to end up killing myself due to the fact that I never uh, I kept I kept on breaking the hearts of women I loved the panic in my ex's mom when we broke up was so heavy so heavy that she kept on harassing him yeah you need to work on this garabo thing work on it my ex would have been able to come back into my life if within the first year that we broke up he got his act together but he didn't he just threw insult into my injuries that whole time until I got over him uh, and his mom the whole time was like you need to go back like what are you doing and he didn't so sometimes these men cause their mother's little mini heart attacks because their mothers know if at all they're good moms because sometimes you get these women that like for their sons the kind of women that they were so like a mom that was a bit of a harlot liking the chick that sleeps around all over the show because birds of a feather they recognize each other right but there are good moms out there that know what's best for their son and for their sons and these women get little heart palpitations when their sons end up with certain women and my ex's mom had a mini heart palpitation when his her son ended up with that girl so what is the state of the marriage right now between him and his Jezebel is this woman the Jezebel unfortunately it's sad somebody needs to pray for her we need to pray for her um she is on the receiving end of vitriol from his friends they don't like her they look at her as a harlot that frankly ended up with the best guy in the room uh and on top of that they uh she in and of herself is not as loved as i was in the relationship as he used to love her back in the day he realized what she is and so he's cold so his whole personality has changed because of what he did in messing up with me therefore my ex who was a really great guy has now become one of those typical black men that just crush women and end up even wanting them dead a man that's started out all right because he listened to bad advice did not go to god and ignored the love that a ride or die woman gave him due to his experiences with bad women before god gave him an olive branch and he threw it spat on it and then he found himself married to a jezebel today i am being so abused if i tell you by a man that came into my life proposed marriage to me recently a dude from the united states he keeps on throwing bombs into my space i can't sleep at night i literally am awake all night long and i sleep only when the sun rises because the, his demons attack me when i'm sleeping at night when the sun has set they thrive the most the only time i get relief is um during the day so i've changed the way that i sleep altogether i wake up at like 2 p.m 3 so that i can survive the demonic attack he slaps me with i work i've been working harder than before uh because i need to get my life back together again because that's the only thing that's going to get him off my back and this man is a man that i don't even know what in the world i was doing there he didn't make sense for me i've already told you the story he was married twice before and because of my sorrow and my pain he infiltrated his way into my life i was like look anybody at all that can get me out of this i'm in pain i'm persecuted so for me his ex-wives and his children didn't matter i came into this thing saying i don't want a man with kids because i don't have kids i don't want a man that's ever been married because i've never been married and i'm 38 years old so i was like ah i'm old now i might as well forget about what i've asked for from god so i was prepared to take a guy with two ex-wives and some kids and a man that has been given that kind of an olive branch that kind of a shot like you have been there done that you've got some bad stats and then you meet fresh out of the shelf a woman that's been disregarded neglected for literally way too long and only because she's 38 she's willing to take you with your bad stats and i was going to be right or die to that guy the way i was with my ex I was going to serve him, I was going to love him, I was going to love his children because I'm good with them. I was going to be cordial with his ex-wives. Literally, I was happy to be wife number three. Imagine that. Rubbish that I shouldn't have taken in my stride. But what did Jesus do? This man never got healed. He never truly gave his life to Jesus. He never ever recovered. He was like my ex and he was embittered from being with two former women that he struggled with and other girls that he was just dating that hurt him. 
and as a result of those bad uh, experiences of the past he also came up with a protocol bullet points on a piece of paper hey as to how to treat a woman just so she can respect you so he came into the life of a pious woman that understands submission that is happy to abandon hopes for a big fat chunky career in order to raise children to have a family everything that these men who fetishize that kind of a woman fetishize I had it even though they shouldn't fetishize it they should realize it once you have that in a woman if those are your desires as a man God has blessed you I was happy to forget about the aspirations of becoming a millionaire insofar as I would be well taken care of and he started out taking care of me paying my way uh, he serviced my vehicle blah blah you remember that season and I accepted his proposal I was basically somebody's fiance for all of five seconds and I was so happy during the time that we were together that nobody could tell me anything my sorrow the persecution that I'm in right now I couldn't even feel it because of the way that I was so in love and this guy then because I was as godly as I was and I try to do my job as a helper suitable counsel him where it is that he needed counseling help him along when he needed helping along try to basically get him to the next level that he can be the best version of himself that he can be and what did he what did he interpret that as conniving overbearing one of those women that are going to tell you what to do and so what did he do he took out his bullet points list on how to treat women that think they can run men and he slapped me with reverse psychology he ghosted me he gaslit me he then afterwards attacked me with sorcery said on my channel my youtube channel so i never ever get my money i never get to monetize he bewitched literally just about anything that he could so i found out that he was not even in christ because he was half in jesus and half in voodoo these are things i found out only by spiritual means because i've got all those same horrific nightmares that i got about, about my ex about this guy how i found out that my ex-boyfriend was bewitching me was because i got a lot of dreams while i was trapped with him a lot of sexual nightmares a lot of dreams with snakes in them eventually god was like this is witchcraft and the same dreams that i got with my ex i got with this guy i was like can i keep meeting the same guy so essentially what the lord did then with this man was see that he's going to try and come into the life of a really great woman he would mess up his chance and he would then get bitter just like my ex and try to make sure that i don't ever come up for air offense and my question was like father why would you allow another one such experience to come into my life and so break me and he was like it's not that i wanted to break you it's that i wanted to show an example of what happens when a person relies on me to heal as opposed to on sorcery they don't get out of a painful situation and then and then just paint everybody else with the same brush they still believe that i can make a new thing out of new guys out of new people so i still have hope of meeting a really great guy that's gonna love me and all the trauma i have endured i am taking it to god that i might not hurt my future husband my fiance that i might not vomit it out on him indeed this guy when he rocked up i was already very broken it only happened a couple of uh, weeks ago i've been getting persecuted for eight years i've been getting abused for eight years and yet i respected this man i treated him man i treated him with honor i did not um what is this judge him based on his past mistakes i didn't judge him based on his two former marriages and his kids i did not based on the mistakes he made was like i don't want you don't you see i'm fresh out of the box you don't get to be with a woman that does not have any baggage when you've got so much i was happy to help him heal in his latter years for he gave his life to the lord in his latter years and so basically i employed biblical uh, christianity in the life of a person with a lot of trauma in the past a lot of baggage and i was like god does not see baggage and so neither do i a woman like that happy to take him with all his kids and all his wives basically make like a rachel in his life where before he was with leah a woman that would be his hannah where before he was with penina a woman that would be his esther where before he was with vashti a woman that was happy to take that with my stats just like with my ex-boyfriend where i had all these great stats but i didn't care because he was gonna love me and so people were like oh, what are you doing with a man like this and i was like you're gonna see where he's gonna go i was still trying to panel beat and this man did the exact same thing that my ex did to me shatter a woman that did not have it coming and now today he's woken up after weeks of afflicting me with witchcraft and he wishes he could come back just like my ex with this guy it took a couple of weeks with my ex it took a year and because of the fact that he knows he can't come back he is now ramping up his sorcery against me so i can't sleep now because i'm being lambasted nonetheless i still keep praying for him because i understand he's in a lot of trouble um more so even than my ex ever can because my ex never claimed to love jesus this guy did so because he has been close to the light and because he has also been persecuting a christian my ex was persecuting an unbeliever too i was also unsaved at the time he's in a lot more trouble than my ex ever can be uh and so i've been praying that the lord might have mercy on him by giving him repentance by giving him an, an opportunity to turn his life his life, life over and the uncomfortable thing is that I know for a fact that if this guy does not stop what he's doing to me because he is afflicting me horribly with witchcraft he's not going to stop my progress but he's going to make it very difficult on route for me to get there because demonic attack makes you makes you sorry sorrowful and it will breaks you down 
right um i can't sleep properly i have to sleep during the day only because his witchcraft is really really like he's obsessed he's obsessed uh he is not going to thwart any of the prosperity that god has given me either way i'm going to break through but god is not content that i should work so hard like not hard but so with such difficulty god is not content that i should hurt so badly i'm rude to getting my dreams fulfilled the father does not want me working like this he does not want me being dragged through the mud groveling through lots of demonic attack that is coming at me from a person that is personally practicing voodoo in their own house so basically this guy is facing death guys god showed me that he's gonna take him out if he doesn't repent because of the way that he's hurting me this is a man i love so i don't want him to die and on top of that he's in a lot of trouble precisely because of the fact that he persecuted a christian and claimed to be christ's and that it will win a person greater condemnation than anybody else so my heart is very burdened for his soul i however and this matter will be out of my hands if despite my praise he doesn't want to come around but you see it is precisely that desire for him to recover that when he listens to videos like this one because he's obsessed with my ministry he then goes back to the drawing board again with witchcraft because it's like goodness she's so magnanimous i've lost such a good woman i can't have another man be in her life i messed up so i can't he's like satan i'm gonna drag as many people down to the flames with me as i possibly can so this man is highly unlikely gonna stop doing what he's doing to me precisely because it breaks him that i am this careful still for him even though he broke me the fact that he can't be with me is just killing him there's no going back now i'm not gonna let him come in and on top of that i realized that i was compromising too much of myself to want to be with a guy indeed with all that baggage because god has no interest in disregarding the prayers i prayed of old when i came to christ i asked him that i want a man that has no children never been married because i'm never been married and i don't have children uh but now that i'm 38 i'm thinking my standards need to be relaxed god was like Garabo, is anything too hard for me i have prepared a man for you he's bespoke to you and you're bespoke to him you can't just settle with anybody i know you're in a lot of pain but stop allowing random strange men to come into your space so basically the lord forgave me for my folly and my little faith and he protected me from a man that would have literally gotten you guys hooked up by a diamond inside your lucky packet a man that would have picked up a gem even though he didn't have it coming he didn't have earned it he hadn't worked on it he hadn't asked the lord for a wife that was that godly he was fornicating at the time when i met him like just a very lukewarm christian um but he would have encountered all of a sudden a woman that was so far away for god and the lord was like i'm not going to just throw my daughters into the lives of people that have not sought me to bless them with healing you were going to be healing to this guy but he was going to abuse you and evidence of the fact that he was going to abuse you is the fact that now that he can't have you he is abusing you he would have just left you alone on top of that he didn't have any valid reason to ghost you like that just like my ex had no valid reason to start hurting me when we were dating i keep meeting the same guys but my response has been god give me healing not i am going to show these men and that's exactly what's happening with black women in the black community uh they like the black men have come up with a protocol list of how to treat every guy that comes he's not gonna step on my toes i have my own car i have my own apartment i have my own abc and i'm gonna show him that if he decides to ghost me gaslight <laughs> i'm walking i don't care i don't say sorry don't nobody move and i don't have to submit myself to what you do you dare? can you pay my bills black women got that attitude all over the show and it's like uh, are you trying to push away the love of your life whether or not a woman is independent is irrelevant what's important is character i was independent i was strongly i was strong financially more even than my man yet i prospered to submit to him despite that he still hurt me and that's exactly what is happening in vice versa mode in both men and women and these guys who are on the far extreme of pain that has not been dealt with by jesus they are at loggerheads with each other so much that people like me are finding themselves wondering if at all the cesspool of war where black women and black men are fighting each other like this to a point where black men think they need to date out and black women think they need to date out I understand that if a black man goes and dates a white woman because they think she's less um feisty and intense as a black woman you're just gonna hurt a woman by coming into her space while your neck is still back there like you know when you spitefully are trying to make your girlfriend jealous by walking around in the neighborhood with another girlfriend you're walking around in the neighborhood so you're not really paying attention to this new girlfriend you are paying attention to the reaction of your old woman because of how you're walking around with a new woman that's what my ex was doing with me on instagram so the new woman could never be loved on top of that she was the wrong pick because she was a very judgment on him that he hoped to judge me with so white women that are being run to by our men are not so much the um instigators of crimes against us as the human race of black people it is these men that are deciding to date black white women for the wrong reasons it's not about love for them it's not about yo i found me a good girl yo what's up mommy like do you with the white woman puerto rican latina whatever it doesn't matter but it must be for the right reasons so i'm pro uh, interracial dating in the west way because we come from a history of oppression fighting each other 
over race. And so now that like black is marrying white and white is marrying pink and purple, I'm like, do you? So I'm not against black men migrating over to white women and vice versa. I am, however, against black women even saying, I think I need to be with a white man now or an Indian man or an Asian man. Because black men ain't jack, they just keep on breaking us. On that day, you're dating for the wrong reasons. You want to handle black men with the fact that you married a white woman. Sorry, a white man. With the fact that you married outside. You, you want to make black men be like, see, this is all that happens when you take a really great girl and hurt her. She goes and marries a white man. What are you doing then on that day to the white man? What are you doing to the new guy that rocks up having to deal with your trauma? Your husband is not going to get the best of you because you're busy trying to say to your ex, look at me kissing a white guy. Look at me making babies with a white guy. They're mixed. Yeah. So they've got that hair. Look at me cooking for the white man. I used to cook for you. Look at me cleaning the house of the white man. And he doesn't even expect me to do it, but I do it anyway because I love him. I was trying to do that for you. He even helps me out every so often. Look at me be happy he marries me. He doesn't even... What? This white man is going to be like, uh, look at me loving you as a woman. Not so much as a black woman, but as a woman. So there is a risk then within interracial dating with women that are dating out or men that are dating out precisely because of how they've been hurt by their own like demographic group of the ones of the people that end up with them basically receiving scraps of these women because these women are busy on some look at me to their exes i also come from a season briefly it was brief where i was like i guess i need to be with a white man sorry i thought i was hearing something because these black men can't be trusted but then the lord was like Arabo, there is neither jew nor gentile please you don't get to think like the world you don't get to do that so if i end up with a white man it should be because i'm in love if i end up with an indian guy it should be because i'm in love and this is it yo what like i ain't never seen none like that like this before no man that has come into my life has, has ever defied this one this is the best man i've ever been with not so much the best white man uh, i've ever but basically man that he's only best because he's white no he's best because whoa i finally got character sweets that i wanted in a man and it just so happens that he is white i don't know who i'm getting married to if at all at this point i'm just like maybe i'm never getting married but i don't think that's true because god keeps showing me i am getting married uh but it doesn't matter whether it's to a black man whatever or white or whatever might be the race whoever i marry it should people must gauge that i'm marrying because i'm in love and that's it and this is what i ask god for in prayer uh but i i can guarantee to you right now that if i got married to a white man today i would have a whole bunch of people in the black community especially men being like oh, whatever date out bottom line is once you go black you can't go back you're basically putting a band-aid on cancer and spraying cologne on a corpse because we couldn't give you what you wanted because you lay you you black women are whack go and be with your white man and he will have be the one that will take all your rubbish because he doesn't have the strength of a black man i would have a whole bunch of people come at me like that and harass my marriage um precisely because of the fact that these guys who are at loggerheads and these women who are at loggerheads with each other have never ever truly sought healing for the damages of the past it's like they keep recycling the narrative so the bad women come into the lives of good men and they tarnish them and they don't seek therapy in christ and the bad women come into the lives of good men and tarnish them and they don't seek therapy and so it just becomes the cesspool where they meet each other and then they're on social media throwing cups and saucers out the room because good girls gone bad like rihanna are basically saying i went bad because these guys ain't ding and vice versa it's a it's a war that's basically pandemonious it's like an epidemic some kind of a sickness of the human race and i'm like father i feel trapped in the middle of it it's uh, i don't know what to do what to do well your solution women is repentance love the lord and he will bring the right guy along but understand that christ is in the business of testing and trying so every so often counterfeits are going to come along and they are going to be very typically heartbreaking in a way that you've been hurt before and you will be like but god i want something different that's why i came to you i turned over these counterfeits will come and they will hurt you in exactly the same way that your ex and your ex and your ex before then hurt you and you are being done that to satanically in order that you might end up in the cesspool of warring people that hate each other because they think it don't get no better that is why when the lord calls us he says you must have long suffering and patience long suffering or pain and also he also says patiently endure evil so you have got to patiently go through all these counterfeits in order to finally embrace your lust but you're not going to finally get into your beautiful guy your beautiful space with your beautiful man that has beautifully sent you by a beautiful god you're not going to be in the space you're not going to get there if you don't patiently endure evil meaning that after the last guy has basically blown up <clears throat> typically dust your feet off dust dust yourself sorry and be like i want to react in a fleshy way but god please heal me from that last thing and please make it such that i don't have bitterness against all men because i know that if you could do this in my heart if you can change my character if you can make out of me a better woman then you can do that out of a man nothing is too hard for the lord the devil wants you to give up on your promise but the lord refines through long suffering and patience 
and 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 long suffering, patience, and endurance. The, the the Lord builds with trials, but the devil tries to discourage through them. So you need to bounce back after the counterfeit. You also need to apply biblical principles when you are courting. You cannot be with an unbeliever. When a guy starts to like rear his ugly head, you need to flee like straight away. You need to. I have. I did a video uh, where I was like, how do you know that somebody's from God? Tests, marks, something that should help you flee fast, like get out quickly. Remember when uh, earlier when I was speaking, I spoke about walking into a room that is stuffy, um, how it is that you need to hold your breath. Well, every time you go into a relationship, you have to hold your breath and not breathe. So you can test if at all you can breathe in it. Some guys are obviously from a mile away wrong for you. Like this guy ought have been um, a red flag for me. Just as soon as he infiltrated my space, gave me money, and then as soon as I was willing to accommodate him, then um, I found out all these things about him. Based on what I asked for from God in prayer, he did not map up against all of these things. So he had kids and a wife and two wives, two former wives. And um, and I didn't ask for that. I did not ask for that. But for me, I was like, ah, whatever, I'm 38. That was from a mile away, a stuffy room. It was a stuffy room from a mile away. But, but I nonetheless went in there. So what did I do? I got hungover, guys. I inhaled the gas. And I got hung over and I was vomiting for a season after this guy ghosted me. I was crying. I was moaning. I was like basting. I was speaking against black men like they all ain't jack. Literally whatever it is that the devil tried to do in me almost worked. But the Lord restored me. He recovered me. The Lord got me out of that cesspool. He rescued me. That man almost finished me, but he didn't. I had warning signs from a mile away, but I walked into the room anyway and I inhaled the stench and it made me dizzy. If you can see from a mile away that this is not what I asked for in prayer, that is the first thing you must walk away from. You know what you ask for in prayer. If the Lord could preserve me for 11 years since coming to him, I came to Christ at the age of 26. I was single, unmarried, never had children at 26. I'm 38 now. I'm turning 38 in just a couple of days. And, um... And so if the Lord could preserve me for 11 years without children, without getting married, keep me chaste, keep me pure, keep me non-fornicating. I've literally not had sex in 11 years. That was the last time I was with that ex-boyfriend of mine. If God could do that in me, then he can do that in a man. So it is not high expectations to be 38 and single and hope to meet a man that's 38 and up and single. Or a man that's basically right for you, that's also single, never been married, never had children. If God could do it in me, he can do it in a man. He can save a man at the age of 28 who has never had children, never been married, and decide not to give him a child until he's 40. I know of one. His name is Alan Parr. And at the age of 40, when you get there with no kids, with no um, former wives, then you know, women, just based on Alan Parr's testimony alone, go check him out there on YouTube. God has done a more wonderful thing with his ministry. If a man like Alan Parr could get to 40 without having gone and become the baby daddy of 20,000 women out here in these streets and married two of those women, if Alan Parr could not make like Nick Cannon, then you must understand that God can do the same thing in, in a man for you. I waited. What power the Lord kept me se uh, separate using, he can do it in a man too. Men might be more fleshy than us when it comes to sensuality, but the Holy Spirit who is greater than the one who is in this world is mightier than their youthful pas passions. Men can say exercise self control guys they can especially when they love jesus so you can't just blanket write them all off therefore if you get to the age of 37 38 maybe even 40 still single having waited since you were 25 understand that the same prayer you prayed when all those things you were asking for were feasible to come into your space at 25 are still feasible at 40 it's just that you are thinking in terms of this time and so therefore you're just letting a guy that has got all these bad stats come into your space so that is like the tenement of a room that smells you can tell it's dingy but you still walk into it anyway so i walked into something that i i should have just been like no i'm sorry i didn't ask for this no hard feelings but i was like ah well you know i'm 38 Literally, when I serve the author of time, Genetics says that in her um, poem, I will wait for you. I serve the author of time and yet I thought that because time has been taken away out of my roster that I have to leave, a, let a guy that doesn't make sense come into my space. So that's the first thing. But what if you do go in, you need to go in with a hazmat suit. I didn't even go in with a hazmat suit, so I got drunk. I got drunk and I was hung over for days thereafter. So if you still think that this is maybe something you must compromise on, it's a different thing that God is doing. At least hold your breath. So when you get out, you're still so in other words don't give too much of yourself don't accept things like proposals don't speak for hours on end allowing yourself to just fall more and more in love with a guy that doesn't make sense that's what i did with this guy which is why by the time he was extracted out of my space i was so drunk with sorrow it took me you know like about a month a month and a half to eventually get to a normal sober space where i can even long for him to be okay and not be so bitter that i want him to just die or something i hate 
hate you so much right now. I'm not there. If anything, I care about his soul. So don't be like Arab. Don't be like Arab. And allow the Lord to restore you to right thinking after a person has done a typical thing. Do not allow yourself to be changed. I mean, on social media, on TikTok, there are all these women. One, some of them look like 25 guys, and yet they've been so broken by guys because they started dating when they were teenagers that they are speaking like bitter broads who are like 48, 49, 50. Women who have been divorced twice and are fed up with men, they are talking like that at 25. These are the kinds of things that need to bring people to Christ so that you're not going to be an unsavory, women, unsavory woman to be in the presence of. Last night I was listening to one that could be no, no older than 27. Basically saying uh, to all these women that are apparently happily married, we know you ain't happily married. We know that you're bitter. We know that you're settling for your husband. We know you feel trapped in a marriage. And I was like, I can't, I can't. She looked no older than 27. And she was talking like a bitter broad at 65 that's been married to three men that all shattered her. At 27, never been married, no kids. Who influenced her that way? Probably this wicked narrative in the black community where men are punching women, women are punching men, and the end result is just a cesspool, this dust plume that you can't see your way through, and cadavers of these men and women lying on top of each other scattered because they've decided to kill each other instead of find healing in Christ. And I'm standing separate from it on some, how do I deal with this? Because if I talk about biblical womanhood in the presence of these men that are fighting these women, they're going to scratch my eyeballs out too, and imagining me the same kind of woman that's going to tell women, don't be acting like you're all happily married, you're not. I'm not that girl. I am being attacked by men in my comments section that lack the context and entirety of who I really am. I'm not one of those bitter women, but I am making it clear that it is wrong and dangerous for a godly, pious woman to be with a man that has not given his life truly to the Lord because he's going to abuse her submission. I said I did a, a, a short of that nature and the number of men that harassed me in my comment section, they broke my heart so much. And I responded initially by just uh, backbiting back. But then I realized some few days after uploading that short that these men are eating me alive because they've been eating alive other women on social media that are happy to fight with them in that cesspool. I'm separate. I am not a bitter bro. I am a woman that has been broken very predictably typically over and over again by the same kinds of men. But I am also a, dis a disciple being chiseled by God, meaning that I endured counterfeits first. But that is that I might gain the character and the strength needed to love my husband. How much more of a really great wife are you going to be when you have endured bad men, loved bad men, and got recovered and still never lost that ability to love. This time around, when you love a good man, it's gonna be easy. Like, you know how it was with my ex, with me, how he was in these strenuous, tense relationships where he could never be at ease. And then as soon as he was with me, he was able to chill and swing in a hammock. I am going to be able to love a man comfortably, literally let boobs out of bra jail and just, hey, I'm gonna get to relax. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna have to work hard, like walk on the edge. This guy was also very ag um, aggressive. I'm not gonna have to walk on eggshells uh, when I'm talking to a man, lest I should trigger something in him. If a person is not busy getting psychological help from God, not so much a human being, you are gonna get easy triggers. When a woman says the smallest little thing or when she is smart and so you feel like her words are overpowering you, they just all of a sudden just throw stones and bullets and you become a samurai and chop off her head and oh my goodness. So they become very difficult to talk to. I was Pink Panther. Did ding did ding did ding did ding No, 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 sorry, that's not what I meant. did ding did ding did ding Oh, I was so hard to be with that guy, but I was forcing it. I had it like it was so hard to be with him. It, it, it should not be that hard. So when I am with my husband, I'm probably going to be tempted to also kind of tread light, making like Erica Badu. But he is going to be so chill and so relaxed and so trained by Christ that him, he's just going to be like, babe, chill, relax. It's okay. And I'm going to be able to be comfortable in his space, even on my worst of days with, and trust that he's not going to snap on me. You need to wait on the Lord. You need to test the environment. You need to put out a thermometer in the room to see if at all it is habitable by you as a person. You need to hold your breath in every relationship that you enter into, every man that you allow to court you. Recreational dating is not good. You shouldn't do it. You shouldn't just date it's just because it's fun. Anybody that you consider should be somebody that you imagine will end up being a marriage. And a man needs to make that uh, clear up front, guys. If he doesn't, then he likely might string you along. So sometimes you find yourself like going on too many dates that like that then you can appreciate as a woman, even though you want courtship and not just random recreational dating. So given that you, you never really know who you're dealing with because initially their bios look really good, their descriptions on their YouTube pages or their descriptions on their TikTok or their descriptions on their Instagram or Facebook, wherever might be the social media platform, what they say about themselves sounds really godly. Every one of their posts is godly, 
blah 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 you, you don't really know if this might be an infiltration so you can't just be like hmm i smell it in the sky and based on a dream i'm not gonna go on a date you can't do that it's immature so go on the date but go there wearing a hazmat suit you cannot allow yourself to get out of bra jail until you're in your house otherwise you're just gonna be a woman with pendulous breasts in the moon in the mall uh, uh, afflicting everyone with your nipple stand you know what i mean you you cannot let go of your guard and the guard is godly guard your heart for from it flows the issues of life you cannot let go of your guard until it is safe to do so it is also not safe to keep a guard up when it is safe to let it down because then you are withholding affection from your husband you need to seek the law's face as to when it's safe to let a guard down or if at all you should even consider letting it down the right guy will really quickly disassemble your ambivalences about any situation at all that you enter into i have never ever had a guy hence i'm still single this ring is a jesus ring come in and help me successfully take off my bra because my boobs were in bra jail and now i'm at home and i'm chilling i've never had that comfortably done and where i've done it which happened only twice in my entire 11 year journey as a christian uh i realized i, I prematurely took off my bra yeah to let the, the boobs breathe i realized i prematurely did that and uh it hurt me because then i'd already had a nipple stand scene and it caused me somewhat uh, some mild key uh, some mild level of embarrassment M unless you want to be bitter you will give your life to god you cannot think it's okay to be bitter at 27 goodness like you haven't even lived and yet there are women who are bitter at that tiny little age so i hope that my story has been inspirational don't be like me and my ex and the new guys that came in and hurt themselves by hurting me have more diligence so that you'll have less heartbreak i kid you not if i hadn't given this guy more than five seconds worth of time he wouldn't be so invested in sorcery to him he believes he had me he believes i was his and so there is a, diff a greater difficulty for him to let me go whereas if i had rejected him from a mile away as soon as i found out about the wife and the kids i would have been like nah it's cool but we fell in love we got to talk for hours on end and he got to believe that we were going to be together and then now he is addicted and obsessed in a way where he's also entitled and so i can't breathe don't get abused by witchcraft because you allowed a man to fall in love with you so much that he doesn't know how he's gonna live on the day you get married don't let it get there don't get yourself stalkers guys because sometimes they know witchcraft and it'll cause you to lack sleep so i hope that you guys have been edified now that i've told you that long story and um and I pray that the Lord grant you conviction and understanding. And I shall put it out there as well that please note that I am a woman preaching to women, not men. But I know that men come to my ministry, so please don't harass me for things I haven't done. Uh, and as for wicked comments, ah, oh, they'll keep coming, man. Uh, let's just pray for maturity and deal. I love you in Christ's name. Uh, Cranberry K. Okay, bye. As you could tell before I officially signed out, I was busy looking in the sky because I knew there was something I was forgetting. Uh, just one last thing. God showed me that what is currently going on right now in these relationships is the creation of satanic alliances in order to try and thwart or hurt or prevent godly marriages by broken men and broken women. They ally with each other to hurt people that have made a mature decision to w with their pain, if you know what I mean. The good girls and the good guys are being allied against by the broken girls and the broken guys. I won't call them bad, they just need healing. Do you understand? And those alliances are so destructive that they are causing lots of despair in the waiting girls and the waiting guys. The way to deal with these guys, all I can say is prayer. We need to pray for them and for us to not capitulate to the temptation to join the cesspool of warriors. They, they are hurt. And so they are in bitterness, desirous of hurting other people. And the thing about the ones who take matters into their own hands and decide to hurt others because they hurt, the ramifications of their actions tend to eventually land them in hot water. They contract viruses, HIV, monkeypox. They um, not only contract viruses, but they also contract bad wives because they can be a disease and bad husbands. And that causes them bitterness. They then become unhappy moms and dads who are not as loving to their kids as they're supposed to be. Essentially, their lives are full of regret and all they can do is desire that you should go to hell or experience the hellish existence that they have with them. Uh, these people want to rub their disease off on you. So they ally with each other. You will find, therefore, in your lives, when this is something that is a ploy against you, a cousin that's broken you, that's a typical woman that's been hurt, or a friend, or a sister, a mom even, that will deliberately be trying to thwart the marriage prospect of their daughter their sister their cousin their friend uh because they have made all these mistakes and they will do this in pairing together with bad men so they will deliberately try to marry you off to a wicked guy they will deliberately try to throw you in the environment of these bad men that you can be so disillusioned and disarrayed by the sorrow of all the men around that you feel like you have to settle for the lesser of these bad men they work with each other to infuse wickedness into your life 
so the solution uh from what the lord has shown me to this is to pray to the lord to if you don't have the strength and the power in and of yourself sever you from influential or negatively influential women that come into your life like bad friends that are going to try and marry you off to a bad man or a friend a friend that's going to introduce you to a guy they know for a fact has hiv or a friend that is going to be wish you so you will settle for a guy with twenty thousand kids when you have none they will you, you will know these friends first of all because of their attitude likely because of the dreams you get as a result of witchcraft but if you're one of those <laughs> like everywhere doormat friends i was one of them like you struggle to tell a friend i don't want you, you struggle to cut people off <clears throat> uh, because you don't want to be rude well ask the lord then to make them cut you off or make them hurt you make them walk in a way that is going to take them out of your life that you will not be infused into your life by something they've influenced into it like with me i have a best cousin the very one i was telling you guys about that we were typed with that told me that the whole rap sheet of the um, Jezebel in my ex's life that cousin was my best friend for all of my life and she bewitched the living daylights out of me as soon as she could learn witchcraft and tried to get me to get back together with that ex even though he was like old news now and has ever has put so much witchcraft on me to just go and fall pregnant by anyone uh date anyone marry badly that is a person that i would not myself because i loved her so much just told her don't call me i don't want to see you ever again i would have struggled to do that but you know what she did she rather walked away from me she bewitched the crap out of me and then hurt my life she afflicted me and then walked away she didn't even want to see me she is no longer in my life because she left and has ever since then been bitter and bad mouthing me i would never have left her myself so the lord has basically told me that um you women that have got these types of influences in your life if you are like a rabbi and you struggle to cut people off ask the lord to just take them out of your life somehow naturally in a very organic natural providential way let them write you off because you've turned to jesus then in that way you're not gonna have to deal with still being friends with your cousin and then you go out together have lunch and then she brings some strange guy there hoping you're gonna hook up knowing that he's hiv positive or something you need to ask the lord to take these people out before they can hurt you they sometimes do this to you because they they know precisely because i don't know how many guys i've dated because my cousin hooked me up with them and they were horrible horrible influences in my life they were bad so um uh, sometimes when you love somebody you you are you you trust their, their judgment and so you date people that they think are good for you i have a family member that contracted hiv because one of her friends introduced her to a guy that she knew had hiv and didn't tell her there are people like that guys in this world so to protect yourself from falling hook line and sinker for a trap of the devil through people that are allying with each other to bring you low ask the lord to make these people just break off from you naturally my cousin broke away from me naturally and so too by the way did this recent guy that came into my life he's the one that ghosted me it literally did not happen the other way around so basically god protected me from myself because i prayed and asked the lord to protect me even from myself to protect me even when i lack the wisdom or the strength to do something that it must be done to me and whatever i must go through i will go through it and then wake up on the other side and realize that i've been saved i've been rescued from myself i wouldn't have left that guy guys i promise you i was so in love so he is the one that ghosted me you need to do that. I broke up with him, but then when I tried to get back, he was like, whatever, you are rubbish. And the reason I broke up was because he pulled stunts. Uh, yeah. You need to ask the Lord to basically get hurt if you can't save yourself by these people hurting you. They must be cut out of your life by divine order since you can't do it yourself. That's what I wanted to say in closing. I love you in Christ's name. Officially, Cranky. Bye.